Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our brand new Dynamics the 65 Hero show. I am Ramit Paul, your favorite Microsoft MVP. Today, let me present you my special guest, Billur. Billur is from Istanbul. People call her the Dynamics Lady. Billur has been in Microsoft ecosystem since 2004. She is a solution architect by profession and a Microsoft MVP. So, without further delay, I am delighted to welcome Billur in today's podcast. Hello, Billur. Welcome to the show. Hello, Ramit. Thank you for to invite me in this show. Uh, and hello, everyone. I am um, very glad to be here. So, uh, before we start, uh, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, how I started, uh, and how I continue, and how I become an MVP. Um, because this is very commonly asked to me uh, by the new uh, joiners, and how they can start, how where they can start. How I started is that first, when I graduated from Istanbul University, uh, as a business administrator, I would like to be an accountant or something like related to finance, but I couldn't find any jobs. So what I did was that try searching jobs for an, as an accountant. And one day my mother come into my uh, room and say that, uh, okay, while I was searching the newspapers for a job for you, I see that this ad, it was like a half page in a newspaper and saying that 28 people's lives will change. And there was just Microsoft logo and one of the local training courses logo on there saying that uh, they will train uh, 28 people for, uh, it was calling Dynamics Accepta back then, uh, Microsoft Accepta and uh, Microsoft Navision, right? Now it's called Dynamics, FNO, and now BC, as you can know. So what I did was that I applied for the job, uh, for the training, and there was that uh, mentioning for a month they will train us, and then we will have a monthly job in one of the partners. And if it's okay for the partners, we can continue. So that was the deal. So uh, I applied, I was selected, and we had a one a month training there. So that one month training was about one week for finance, uh, two weeks for logistics, uh, SCM, and one for the manufacturing, and then we started the job. Uh, this is how I started, and uh, I made my one month in the partner and I love it because I was traveling. Um, I was being in different projects and being in a project is also very awesome uh, as you may can, as you can imagine. But of course, it's sometimes overwhelming to make those travels. If you are traveling, back then there was no COVID or something. So we were traveling too much. I have flied in the first, I don't know, five years, like 600 flights I took. And uh, <laughs> then uh, in, in, in Microsoft Accepta or then AX, uh, you can see that you can be, you are able to know everything. So what I was doing is I was doing just not finance, now I'm doing mostly finance stuff. But then I was doing finance, I was doing SCM, I was doing manufacturing, I was doing HR and almost everything. Except for the development part, because I cannot write a single code. Uh, it, while I was uh, in the university, we were having the technology classes, right? And uh, I have even given a homework on ERP. This is how I know what an ERP is back then. Uh, and there was also, we were learning SQL and I was like 
what I'm going to do with, with the SQL. So I'm going to be an accountant, right? But I just jump into a technology, into, into IT business. But still, I could not write even one single code and still can't. Um, and that's, that was my luck. So I was thinking what I'm going to do. It's very important uh, for me to understand to write the code, but I cannot. So I married a developer. So <laughs> I found the best developer in the world for me and then married him. So it was easy for me to manage uh, the development part as well. Uh, so for example, if a developer tells me that this cannot be done, then I go and bring him and ask him if it's possible or not. So this is how I'm managing. But now in these days, it's a little bit harder to manage all the finance, SCM, manufacturing all together. Because you know, now Microsoft Dynamics FNO is like a huge thing. In every part, in, in every three months, new things are coming into the system. Even some modules are rising. Um, some integrations and there is now power platform object. So it's not easy to manage everything. So I have to select one uh, of the modules. This is why I selected finance. And uh, time to time uh, during doing the projects, which I have been in more than 40 projects since 2004, I know that something was missing. Okay, I was good and in managing the projects, doing them to do the consultation, to project managing, and etc. Something was missing. Uh, what I was doing is to, I like teaching people uh, things I love. Uh, in the project, the best one, uh, the, the best phase is the training part. So one day, something special in my uh, life happened and uh, that affect my life so I was just saying that okay I have to give a stop a little bit to for to do the projects and do something else then what I did was that I have finalized my certifications first so I already have a finance so MB uh, 310 then I go for 300 and then 700 and become a really um, a solution architect, which has its certifications. And I learned a lot during having the certifications because although you do the same things, uh, what you have to do is to learn what's new in the system. So certifications do also help for that part as well. Then I say, if I love to train people, why not to be an MCT? So I applied for an MCT, take the courses, yeah. and then I become an MCT. Now I can train. I, I can do whatever I like to do. Yeah. Then I was still missing things. During my, uh, during I was uh, searching for more, I see that there is a Dynamics community platform, right? I always use that in a way or another, you know, I was always searching for answers time to time because you cannot know it all. So when you go for a project and a customer asks you something, if you cannot find the solution in documentation or even you have an issue that you have in the system and you want to ask uh, uh, to someone who is better than you or maybe not better, but has experience. I was always searching to the uh, uh, internet, you can say, right? And there's always rising me, it's either Ludwig or it's either <laughs> Andre, right? Yeah. Because they are both finance mostly and I really adore them. So I really like them. Uh, they were like my heroes, we can say. And then when I start reading, I say, why am I not replying? Now it's time for me. And I have time to reply because it 
easy to reply if you know something, especially if that happened to you, if you have that experience so that we can help rather than always waiting someone else to help. So this is how I started the Dynamics community posts. And I, then I yeah. say that, okay, I always try to do a blog, right? Why not to create a blog in the community and uh, write down the blogs there? And I was always um, hearing, okay, about the um, MVP thing, but I didn't know what an MVP is. I only know that it's an awesome thing. To be an MVP is an awesome. But I didn't know the details. So I read uh, what an MVP is and still had questions. So I asked Andre Clavin and what an MVP is. And he explained me. Actually, I think he is a wonderful MVP because he helps always. Yes. And told me that being an MVP is not about the best to be the best is about helping people of the community and it was good for me because i was already doing that so uh, nothing has been changed since we talk with andre i keep on going helping people through community of course i was doing my blogs i don't know i started just taking some videos and exit from and somehow it's been seen from across the oceans from America uh, while I'm living in Turkey in Istanbul. It was very far, uh, but it's been seen by an MVP and then told me if I can just show you as an MVP and I say, yes, of course, <laughs> because it's, it's a huge honor, you know, and then yeah. um, then it's evaluated and I become an MVP and I like it. Uh, but as I mentioned, it's not something that uh, you think you deserve for. People should think that you deserve it. And yeah. for to deserve it, all you have to do is to help people. It's very easy. You know, you can always spare some time. What I do now is that I'm not saying in a day, I should create one vlog a day. I'm not saying that I should spare half an, an hour in a day. When I see it, when I see the issue, if I know it, I just reply in three minutes or five minutes. That's it. So this is something that everyone can do. Uh, the important thing here is that if it's something that you like to do, right yeah um so this is how i become an mct how i become a solution architect and how i become an mvp um so far so for the new ones uh, who try to be in this dynamics world what i can offer is that please use the documentations I know that Microsoft, because I'm reading, because every time it's been updated. So use Microsoft documentations and then use Learn efficiently, because in Learn, there's also virtual missions that you can check for and you can do everything there. So you can use the virtual missions now in the Learn do your certifications and certifications are really important for Microsoft to understand who you are, right? And also the people. And then uh, you can go anywhere. You can use the community for your questions. You can read the blogs. There are lots of blogs. It can be directly written blogs like Hilke does. I, I like Hilke Brista's uh blogs it, he always shows something little little that needs to be known and like the video blogs like you Ramit, i also watch your videos uh 
you know, when they are displayed, right? Because even though you know you may just skip one thing, one single thing, information is very important here because this is what the ERP is actually, to have the information into the system and to report it to decide, right? This is what an ERP, ERP programs is not something like you just put the data in. The important yep. thing is that data reporting and then decision comes to a person. Actually, we are talking about the AI, right? And which is a good thing, you know, AI is very important thing in our lives, uh, but it will not ever, I believe, and hope so, replace the person uh, who needs to decide. Yeah. Of course, it will help people. You know, uh, in early, I don't know, 60s, there were not ERPs, and um, I think it come up in, in 80s or 70s, as far as I remember. I might be mistaken, sorry for that. But uh, back then, of course, it takes lots of people to make things right. Then the ERPs came first, MRP, then MRP2, then ERP, and now it's going better and better. And Microsoft uh, Dynamics ERP is something which I cannot imagine back in uh, 10 years before. Because back then, you know, we have 3040, 2009, and 2012. Even 2012 was not good as this one, the Dynamics uh, family part. Because now we have, yep. we're going to have ODOP, uh, one Dynamics, one platform in the future, which we are going to use very easily. Now we can use it also, which we can use the Power Platform objects more easily. We have supply chain platform, which is huge. Heinz is using it uh, as far as I know. So ERP is going further and further more uh, for, because, uh, because it's a need. It's a need for reporting if you are global, if you have different companies in all over, the, across the world, right? And as a CEO, CFO, as a manager, or, or, or a stakeholder, you have to decide things by looking directly to the data. And it's very important now, for example, you can do sustainability in the system and uh, you can uh, track your everything into the system, which is very important. And I believe in the future, it's, it will be very, very more important. And I think that Power Platform objects will be very important in the future, more important in the future when designing the ERP projects. It's not like, it will be like n almost no coding or low coding. No, it's no code and low code, I can understand, but I think in the future, it will be no code because there will be AI which will can code for you, <laughs> which can do sometimes uh, that way. Uh, but the important thing will be the data, the design that you do. And then when you design it, when you report it in case by the help of the AI, probably it will depend on the person to decide because the world is more competitive uh, as it is before 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So it's very important to check your costs like uh, and check your profits uh, better because there are too many, too many players now in, 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 in your environment that you need to decide and answer questions. Yeah. So below great insight and thanks for sharing this end-to-end -end ecosystem and the evaluation of ERP. Since you have mentioned about your Im the impact of Dynamics Startup community and how it impacted you and how it impacts other people, I have one question. After becoming the MVP, so what responsibility increases to to help more or what responsibility you feel that increased after you becoming the MVP? 
actually, as I mentioned, I like helping people. I, I always helped people uh, before becoming an MEP. Even I start hosting the community. I was just helping my Turkish community. I have raised new consultants, which may come to good places now. But um, as I mentioned, what I would like to do is to do what I do, and I still continue the same thing. The, the only change uh, applied is that uh, I have this badge now. So uh, yes, of course, the responsibility rises because you have to act uh, the same way, uh, the correct way always. So now you have a badge, you have that title of being an MVP. So uh, what it does is that, for example, if I don't reply anything <laughs> for that day, I feel responsible, right? Because it's not like just being asked from community. Uh, people start asking from LinkedIn uh, as well. So I try to reply as much as I can from LinkedIn or they can send directly me emails on how they can do it. If I can help, I'm asking them, okay, you can do it this way. Or I say that, okay, I don't know this question's answer. Uh, you can directly ask from the community uh, and they can help you probably. Um, but as I said, yes, I feel more responsible um, even though I'm doing what I like and I'm trying to give more to my community now. Great, fantastic. Villur, <clears throat> as you mentioned, the, the devaluation of ERP and this is going to be changed in low code, no code and no code. <laughs> so what about the consultant who is, you know, since we also work in an orthodox way, the traditional way, the functional people will take the design, will do some design, and the technical people who develops, they will do the coding. So what about this traditional approach that who does functional design, what they will do, what they need to adopt in part of future, and what the technical people who only responsible for doing the coding, what they need to do or they, what they need to adopt you know, in future days. So what is your suggestion? Okay, this is what I'm discussing with my husband as well, because he's a developer. <laughs> so he may lose his job. No, of course not. Uh, he will not lose his job. So uh, as you know, Ramit, uh, as a consultant, I have to know, I have to understand a bit of code, right? Because the relations are important when you go to a developer, to, to, especially if it's junior, is if he or she is a junior. And as a developer, you have to a little bit understand how the process is. So I think in the future, the consult, the, the developers will become a consultant as well. You know, in the, in the last, for example, 2012, 2009, we were doing too many developments into the system because there were some missing modules like uh, exports, imports, some logistic parts and doing reports into the system. For example, now we are not doing any reports into the system or amending the reports unless it's too needy. Uh, if user just insists on some columns to add. But now if you want to make a report, you can use Power BI. And the Power yeah. BI is very strong uh, report, uh, reporting tool. And uh, in, in a time, user will can also do their own reports because it's easy. It, the user interface is very easy. Or for example, uh, the IT teams can use the power uh, apps or can also use the standard power applications uh, to embed into the system. So in developer perspective, I think, um, as you know, for example, in, in, in this phase also, there is no servers, right? In, if you are not just uh, wanted, Microsoft supports on the cloud. This doesn't mean that people lose their jobs as a developers. I think they become okay. solution architects, right? As the consultant. Okay. Um, and they will do the system architects. 
actually for example my husband is um biz um actually not a developer as a computer engineer but making okay. the development but actually uh, i think computer engineers should not develop code it's for the developers and they should be the art uh, the architects of the system they should be the engineers as well. uh, i think in the future being a solution architect will become more important to implement the processes do the lot of migration uh, changing the world and designing the processes of of uh, the erp systems because you know the erp systems uh, a little bit uh, people uh, do not understand maybe in in a way, in a way because if you do not do erp in your system right mm -hmm. using it erp system is not important so you do your erp in your in your in your company and then use erp systems accordingly so designing will become more important and as i mentioned there will be ai uh, there will be odo and there will be uh, uh, i don't know some other tools that we can use in the future for not to write any codes in the system but the developers can be used uh, because you know the technical people are very important I, they think we're technical uh, can be used as solution architects in the future but i'm not talking about very near future not like next year five years later yeah. but maybe in 10 or 20 years or 30 years who knows it depends on the technology so you yeah. cannot you will not uh, uh, be like okay i'm losing my job because you know um 30 years before there were calculators right and when calculators came people didn't lose their jobs just their jobs changed and then yep. after calculators there are computers right when computer came they didn't lose their job just the jobs change for example now we have software developers we have computer engineers for example if there were five accountants and one developer now there are three accountants and three developers so uh, yep. people have to decide on what they want for example my son wants to, to be a doctor, okay? Now uh, he wants to be a YouTube, uh, YouTuber, right? Yeah. So just, just job change. So he will find something, hopefully, and get rich. Ah. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome insight, uh, Billur. Yeah, there has been a lot of insight you have given for the futures and all. One last question will look for you that you know being a wife being a mother and being you are working in an industry and like it is a industry like you have to be very much the client centric client facing you have to discuss something with client but apart from this how do you manage you know helping people uh, day in and day out so what is your suggestion that you know some people says okay if i, I don't get time to help people so that that's why i don't uh, help people so how do you manage in that area okay uh, let me tell you how i manage uh, with explaining how i daily start so i wake up at six o'clock all right when i first wake up i do directly look into my emails and check out the community emails right if there's something that i can understand because when i wake up there was like 35 to 40 emails uh, from the community for example, there can be just one or two that I can reply. So I reply them quickly. And then I wake up my son at 6.30, prepare breakfast, and then prepare him to school and left him to school. And when I'm back to home, it was like 8 or 8.15. Then I go into the emails that I have. And if there's any new one that I can reply, I reply them and I go into LinkedIn right uh, i'm checking if i have any questions regarding the uh, anything that i can check and just post a couple of 
uh, things in LinkedIn. Then at nine o'clock, I start working till 12. And at 12, I have lunch time. I prepare my lunch and just check out my emails, my personal emails, if they uh, something that I can reply and I reply them. And then an hour later, I start working again until six. At six, what I do is that finalize my job and then check out my emails and look for if something that I can reply. And if there's like three or four, it's not like hundreds a day because I'm not the only one. Comey has replied, you have replied. Most of them have, all, uh, have already been replied before me, even before me. So I'm just checking if they are the correct answers, if, the, if, if something that has not been replied, so I apply them. And then if I have time, I, um, uh, what I do is write a blog and in the weekends, I can just take one video accordingly. Uh, if, if I would like to join in the weekends, not in the weekdays, unfortunately, uh, but in the weekends, if there's something, uh, some um, event been happening, I'm trying to be in there as much as I can. If as a speaker, yes, I do it as a speaker. If I cannot do it as a speaker, I just attend to listen you know, to learn new things and how it's going to be. So I believe that it's not taking too much time. You cannot say that you cannot spare, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes for this purpose, because it's not like replying everything, just replying the ones that you can. And I also ask questions in the Dynamics community. It's not like I'm um, replying. But if I have a problem, if something that I cannot solve it, I directly put it into the system and wait for the replies. If there is something that I really want in the system, I'm using ideas portal uh, of Microsoft and saying that, okay, we, my customers mostly need this kind of a solution. Can we put it in directly into the system? So I, I don't think that it's something hard to manage. You uh, replying the questions part. You don't have to write a blog. You don't have, um, have to do the video blogs, but you can do something for the community. It, it's, not, it's not that hard. As you mentioned, I'm also uh, working, okay? Five days a week. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. Even if I can do, <laughs> right, uh, you can do as well. Great. <clears throat> Super. Uh, after hearing uh, Villur uh, from this session, it's, I must uh, suggest this session to every woman, every, not, even, not only women, every man that whenever they say there are problems in my life, I cannot do that, I cannot help anyone. So they should watch your story. How do you manage? How do you manage the time? And everything apart from that, you are, and also it's be looking so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so managing one everything. Thing, one thing I cannot do is that uh, that I should take into my life is the sports. You know, I don't do any sports. <laughs> yeah. But maybe in the future. Yeah, but surely this this suggestion and this video, if a sportsman also can see that you are how you are managing your life and how. You know, you are inspiring the others. Like they will surely get motivated by looking at your uh, timeline and whatever you are doing now. So hats off to you, uh, Billur. Thanks uh, for sharing this insight. Personally, I got very motivated uh, after hearing you. So I will definitely give more time into the community uh, <laughs> after hearing you. So thanks, Billur. Uh, thanks for your time. It's uh, really appreciated. And uh, you know. I wanted to forget to the to congratulate in, in person. I said you congratulations in LinkedIn in other forum, but in here did not so con heartiest con congratulations will look for becoming the new MVP. I hope you will continue this forever. Uh, just continue to do that whatever you are doing. Okay, wish you all the best, Billu. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Ramit, and thank you for everyone who is listening. We are waiting for everyone. We not we need support from everywhere, of course.
for yes, our community. Yes, we need people. We need people like you. Thank you so much, Billur. Once again. Thank you. Have a nice day, Billur. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. So, ladies and gentlemen, what a session this was. This was Billur for you. Billur has talked about many things in ERP industry. Like the future of AI in the ERP and the impact, the low code, no code importance in the ERP, and what are the futures of our developer and a functional consultant for the you no know, low code and no no code evolving era. She has also talked about Microsoft Learn, Microsoft Dynamics is to a community, how the community became the part of life for us. Okay. and also she has talked about reading blogs and learn efficiently the last thing she mentioned that you can do something for the community and it's not that hard we wish billud all the best for our future interviews thanks for watching stay tuned for another episode next week